It looks like number eight. This is microphone number eight. It will be used for the flute. That's flute, yeah. And then I think you've got some... Um,
Yes, I presume so. Anyway, good morning and welcome on this wonderful morning. Uh, I just have one notice. So if you look around, there are some wonderful flowers here. So if anybody would like to take some flowers at the end of the 10.30 service, either to cheer up themselves or someone else that they know, then please feel free to take a small bunch. Now, Lee's going to open our worship and then I should follow later with the Lent liturgy. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Mary. The reading today is based on John 20, verses 11 to 18. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white, seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this she turned round and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realise that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned towards him and cried in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not ascended yet to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them. I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord. And she told them what he had said these things to her. Who is it that you are looking for? That is the question. Who was she looking for as she went to the tomb? How open were her eyes, her heart and mind? How much did her wilderness moments of this last week cloud her vision of what she saw, cast adrift, grieving, fearful, tearful? Then, in her greatest wilderness moment, she met Jesus when she least expected. Who is it you are looking for? Who is it we have been looking for in Lent? In our wilderness, what did we search for? What did we hope to find or know? Who did we find? Who did we see? Did we meet Christ in those days? Were we aware of him with us at all? Today, a new dawn rises, a new, gen a new day, a new vision, a new hope, a new challenge. For indeed, he is here with us. May our hearts and minds be open as we celebrate Easter Day. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He is risen indeed. And we add flowers and eggs to our flowers. And then we sing one version of No, we're singing all of it. We're singing all of it. <laughs> <laughs> So we sing the hymn, Christ is alive, let Christians sing.
So let's pray. Glory to you, O God. You raised Jesus from the grave, bringing us victory over death and giving us eternal life. Glory to you, O Christ, for us and for our salvation you overcame death and opened the gate to everlasting life. Glory to you, O Spirit. You lead us into the truth and breathe new life into us. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. And let us confess our sins to God. If we have fallen into despair, Lord, forgive us. If we have failed to hope in you, Lord, forgive us. If we have, fear, if we have been fearful of death, Lord, forgive us. If we have forgotten the victory of Christ, Lord, forgive us. May the living God raise you from despair, give you victory over sin, and set you free in Christ. Amen. And the collect for Easter Sunday. Lord of all life and power, who through the mighty resurrection of your Son overcame the old order of sin and death to make all things new in him. Grant that we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory, to whom with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit be praise and honour, glory and might, now and in all eternity. Amen. And we say together, glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And so we listen to the Word of God, first with a reading from the book of Acts, and then from Luke's Gospel. First reading is from Acts 10, verses 34 to 43. Then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts from every nation the one who fears him and does what is right. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel announcing the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what has happened throughout the province of Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good and healing all those, all who were under the power of the devil, because God was with him. We are witnesses of everything he did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a cross, but God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen he was not seen by all the people, but by witnesses whom God had already chosen, by us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the, the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. This is the word of the Lord. And 
our gospel reading is taken from Luke 24, reading verses 1 to 12. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to him, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. When they came back to the tomb, they told all these things to eleven, to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women, because the words seemed to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. This is the word of the Lord. Over the course of this week, we've journeyed with Jesus and those first disciples and friends of Christ. On Sunday, we cheered and joined with the shouts of Hosanna as Jesus entered Jerusalem on the back of a donkey. On Thursday, many of us met together, admittedly not in an upstairs room, but here in church. We remembered that final meal that Jesus shared with his friends, breaking bread and sharing wine amongst them. And after breaking bread and sharing wine, we journeyed through the passion narrative in Luke's gospel as Jesus spent those last moments with his friends, being betrayed, put on trial, beaten, bruised and crucified. On Friday, many of you journeyed from Chipping Sodbury to Yate or joined in the worship in the shopping centre. And together we remembered those final hours of Jesus' life. Yesterday, although we did not meet collectively, I hope you managed to find some time to be with those first disciples as they sat together, no doubt in shock and wonder, about what had happened to their friend. And I know for a fact that many in this place have been there this week. Today though, we are gathered together once more, rejoicing at the empty tomb. The message that the women, uh, that the women had brought, the the message that the women had brought to those that believed, that Jesus had risen and was amongst the living. I wonder though, if we reflect on the world as a whole, where we might be in that journey through Holy Week. I wonder if as a world we are suffering the pain and the sorrow of Good Friday. or feeling the mourning and loss of Holy Saturday? Or are are we rejoicing in the resurrection hope that we proclaim today? We're living in a country where all sides of the political spectrum 
are at various stages of what seems to be disaster. We're living on a continent which is seeing war in its land. We're living in a world suffering from the devastating effects of the climate emergency, the rising temperatures, the increase in famine and droughts. We're still stuck in the devastating effects of the global pandemic that has caused death and destruction across the world. And parts of our world are still yet to see the positive effects of the vaccine that we see here in Britain and the global West. Our Methodist way of life commitment this month is to care for creation and all God's gifts. I think that we are still a long way off in this regard, despite the best efforts that we put into gaining a bronze Eco Church award. I know I, for one, often jump in the car to get to church rather than to do the 10 minutes walk. I sense as a world we are far from that rejoicing of Easter Sunday if we look around us. In many ways we are still, uh, still involved in watching the death and the destruction around us whilst mourning what we've already lost. But let's think about that reading from Luke's Gospel this morning. Like the other accounts of the resurrection, it begins early in the morning on the third day. On the Friday, the women had seen Jesus placed into the tomb. They'd returned home and prepared the spices and ointments that were needed for the body. But then, as was required, they rested on the Sabbath. And so on this first day of the week, they were desperate to give Jesus the burial that he deserved. And so before sunrise, they headed back to the tomb with the spices that they'd prepared. But when they arrived, it was not as they expected. And it was certainly not how they'd left it. And as the women wondered, they were joined by two men in dazzling white. Note just how much more low-key Luke's gospel is compared to the others. For there, were no, there is no mention of angels in Luke's gospel. Just two men in dazzling clothes. Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. The two, the, the two men helped the women to understand what it was Jesus had been teaching them. How Jesus had declared that he must be crucified, but on the third day he would rise again. The women returned to the eleven disciples and told them about what they had experienced, what they discovered in the tomb. And sadly, not for the last time in the life of the church, the testimony of those women were shunned. How could what they say be right? Were they shunned because they were women? Or were they shunned because what they were suggesting was so shocking it just couldn't be possible? This whole resurrection story is one of complete wonder and amazement. And that classic Wesley hymn, Love Divine, concludes with these words. Finish then thy new creation, pure and spotless let us be. Let us see thy great salvation perfectly restored in thee. Changed from glory into glory, till in heaven we take our place. Till we cast our crowns before thee, lost in wonder, love and praise. 
I wonder if we've heard the resurrection story so many times and the fact that we so easily jump from the triumphant entry of Jesus into Jerusalem to the empty tomb that we've lost some of that sense of wonder, love and praise and not in the positive way that the hymn suggests. If we've lost that sense of wonder that the resurrection narrative offers to us, we too easily lose that sense of the overturning of culture and tradition that the life, death and resurrection of Jesus offers to each one of us. In our reading from the book of Acts, Peter had been directed to go to the Gentiles. As a good Jew, he was a bit unsure about what he was being called to do. But Peter came to the realization that God shows no partiality. But in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. And that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. And so today is the most amazing day in the Christian calendar. Today we rejoice in the fact that Jesus defeated sin, was raised to a newness of life in order to give life and life in all its fullness. So today let's hear this message anew with fresh ears and open hearts. Today, let's be lost in wonder, love, and praise as we hear again that radical message of Christ overturning culture and tradition. Today, let's go from this place holding on to that wonder, realizing the fact that the the resurrection is about fixing everything and restoring the world to the way that God intended. Today, let's be open to the God of surprises. The God who surprised the women at the tomb. The God who surprised Peter when he saw the linen cloths by themselves. The God who would go on to meet with friends and disciples on the road to Emmaus and in that upper room. Peace be with you was the message of Jesus to those disciples. May we receive the peace of Christ into our lives, dwelling in the grace by which we have been saved and reconciled to God. And let's share that peace with others so that together as God's children, we can begin to step out of the darkness of death and into the marvelous light of Christ. Amen. Up from the grave he arose with a mighty triumph over his foes. We stand as we're able to sing the hymn, Lo, in the grave he lay.
And so we come to God in prayer as we pray for ourselves and the world around us. And the response in our prayers of intercession, when I say Lord of life, the response is hear us in your love. Lord of life, hear us in your love. So in the power of the resurrection, we offer our prayers to God. Remember, O Lord, in your love, the church throughout the world. We think particularly of your persecuted church that meets in secret. And your church in Ukraine as it meets in uh, subways and underground shelters trying to preserve life. We hold before you those who are recently baptised and confirmed and those who minister to others. May your whole church know your power and be a sign that Christ is risen. Lord of life, hear us in your love. Remember in your love the world you have made those who seek a fair and proper use of the world's resources, those who strive for justice and peace among the nations. May the whole earth be transformed by mercy and rejoice in hope. Lord of life, hear us in your love. Remember in your love those who suffer, the victims of violence and injustice, and all those who mourn. We think particularly of Michael's family this week. May all in need find comfort, strength, and freedom in the living Christ. Lord of life, hear us in your love. Remember in your love those who have died, those who have confessed the faith, and those whose faith is known to you alone. May all your children receive grace and light according to their needs, and come at last to share with all the saints in life eternal. Lord of life, hear us in your love. Gracious God, we ask these prayers through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord and Saviour. Amen. And as our Saviour taught his disciples, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And so together we profess the faith of the church. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen, we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he arose again 
in accordance with the scriptures. He sent it to heaven and he's seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. Hallelujah! The peace of the risen Christ be always with you. I know that my Redeemer lives. He lives, to, he lives. he lives to set me free. We sing our next hymn, during which we receive the offering for the work of God in this place and beyond. We thank you, Lord, for all that you have given us. You asked us to share what we have, so we bring our gifts of money, tokens of our love, and ask for your blessing on them. We ask this through your Son. Amen. Here is bread, God's good gift. 
it will become for us the bread of life. Here is wine, God's good gift. It will become for us the cup of salvation. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessing and honour, glory and power are rightly yours, O gracious God. By your creative words you brought the world to birth. In your generous love you made the human family, that we might see your glory and live forever in your presence. Blessing and honour, glory and power are rightly yours, O gracious God. When we wandered from you in our sin, you sought us with your steadfast love and did not give us up. In the fullness of time, you sent your Son to be our Saviour and Deliverer. Made of flesh and blood, he lived our life and died our death upon the cross. Death could not hold him. And now he reigns at your right hand. Blessing and honour, glory and power are rightly yours, O gracious God. And therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we bless and praise your glorious name, saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed indeed is the Lord Jesus Christ, who at supper with his friends took bread and gave you thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when supper was ended, he took the cup and gave thanks, gave it to them and said, drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for everyone, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Therefore, Father, we celebrate this Passover of gladness. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Accept through him, our great high priest, this sacrifice of praise. Send down your Holy Spirit, that these gifts of bread and wine may be for us the body and blood of Christ. Gather us who share this feast into the kingdom of your glory that with all your people in every time and place we may praise and worship you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, Heavenly Father, now and always. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. This morning we'll distribute uh, the bread and the wine in a continuous flow system. Um, so somebody will kind of direct you to the front. Um, I'll be in the middle with the bread, and you'll take the bread from me, and then move to the side to take the wine, and then there's some uh, trays and baskets for you to put the empties in. And we'll be starting on this side, and then moving across to this side. And so we meet the risen Christ in the breaking of bread. Draw near with faith, for the table is prepared and all are welcome.
Let us pray. God of our salvation, we thank you for our communion with the risen Christ 
and with all who love him in earth and heaven. We pray that strengthened by his grace, we may serve you faithfully all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And our closing hymn this morning, Thine be the glory, risen conquering Son. by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him in the risen life. And may almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Go in joy and peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Hallelujah.